Hey, this is Wesley with Millwright CNC. Um, today, I'm going to talk about some joint work that you can do on your three-axis machines. This is not typical joint work um, like dovetails, which is usually the stock is set on its side so the end mill leaves a nice flat section to work on. This is stuff that you can do on the bed of the CNC router. Um, what we're looking at today is a, a blog by Mike Myers. He uh, does a lot of work. Uh, it's a real good blog. Check it out. But today we're going to look at the, the simplest one, in my opinion, the, uh, the fake finger tenons. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut out these shapes and this tenon and these tenons are going to merge together. And that's what we're looking at doing today. So let's bring up our VCard Pro. Um, right now we're going to change this later, but we got 12 by 12 by 3 quarters and our datum position is in the bottom left. I'm going to hit OK on that. Now what we're going to do first is we're going to work on the, the features, the cutout features. So to do that we'll go up here and draw a rectangle and what we're looking for is uh, a width of 0.75 and a height of 0.25. We'll just pop it out here somewhere zoom in a little bit. Alright, we're going to need two of these. So, um, I find the easiest way to do that instead of making another one and trying to line it all up. So just do a copy array. We're going to have two rows, one column, and the offset. Uh, our second one's going to end up down here. So we got a negative 0 0.5. We're going to group the copies. Alright, now that that's done, we're going to make another rectangle. This one's going to be 0.5 and 0.25 so we'll just hit create. Now we're going to move this one in relation to this one. This is part of the reason they're grouped. We're going to bring it in the middle and bring it over to the left. So that is exactly where we want it. So now we're going to take this and ungroup it. Uh, we're going to use the, this tool do a normal fillet and um, going to get these corners here. Alright, now keep your fingers on Control Z and we'll do some trimming. So we'll just take out the lines we don't need. Alright. Okay, we're going to break up these lines by using the uh, draw line tool. We're going to get here on this corner. Get a line out this way line out this way and that'll break up those shapes so that we can finish our trimming now what we're going to do now is we're going to make a copy of this shape so control C control V move this one out here we're going to alter this one just a little bit so we're going to make another 0.5 by 0.25 rectangle. Then we're going to move this one in relation to this shape. Then we're going to finish our trimming. Mm. Yeah, we don't need that. Okay. Now those are our features for the cutouts. Now we're going to make the actual uh, pieces. Alright, those are going to be those are going to be uh, 2 inches wide and 4.5 inches tall. And uh, these pieces right here are going to be 75 uh, 0.75 inches and that's just a nice number to work with 4.5 so we will zoom out a little bit put it right here in the middle now we're going to move this one in relation to this one and put it at the top select that feature right there then we're going to create a mirrored copy here and just run it down Alright, 
we are going to keep every other one. This is just to help us space the features out the way we need them to be. Now we will take this one and the stock and we will move it down to the bottom left. All right. Get our trimming tool back out and trim these sections that we don't need. And that is our first feature. What we're going to do here is just make sure everything is connected. See if any open vectors and there's not. So what we're going to do now is make a copy of this one, create a mirrored copy, and we are going to walk it to the right. Then turn mirror copy off and flip on the vertical. And then this is our two pieces. So that's how they're going to fit together. Right there. And make it a nice joint. And now these cutouts are here so that this square section can fit snugly. If you tried to do a uh, cutout without these features here, then this portion will be rounded off because the end mill is round and it won't fit snugly. So we have these cutouts here to, to allow this section to, to sit nicely in to each other. All right. Now we are going to adjust our job size here because uh, we're not going to make this out of a 12 by 12 stock. We are going to do it out of a 4 by 12. And I changed the wrong number there. All right. And we are going to rotate these to fit on that stock. So we're going to rotate them 90. there we are going to space them out on this stock all right now our stock is going to be three quarters and we are going to make these uh, finger tenons out of um, half inch stock so we need to plane our stock down so to do that we're going to make another square to use as a as a little uh, bounding box for uh, our planing operation so the width is going to be 11 and the height is going to be 3 we'll create that highlight that and move it on to the center of the stock all right that's everything we need so let's move on to our tool paths <clears throat> so first we're going to plane down, we're going to do a pocket tool pass, selecting that rectangle we just uh, made. Use an end mill, a cut depth is 0.25, and we are going to calculate that. Alright, next we are going to select our fingerboards, and... Um, we are going to do a profile toolpath. Now these features here are 0.25 and you would think that a quarter inch end mill would fit in those nicely but there's something funny with the uh, program and they don't cut it out completely and um, to keep the numbers nice and easy to work with we'll still use 0.25 but we will select a uh, 1 8 end mill to do the profile. Our start depth is going to be 0.25 and our cut depth is 0.5. We are going to add some tabs, just three of them to keep these in. There we go. And then we are going to calculate see what this looks like. There's our, our plane, our pocket, and there's our contour. So this is what the end product is going to look like and these tenons 
are going to merge together and form a joint. Close that out. Let's check. Uh, this pocket is the one quarter, but this one is a finishing pass with a one eighth bit. We don't need that, so we will go ahead and delete that one. So we're left with a quarter inch pocket and then the one eighth profile. We'll check the times on that. And if you had stock the appropriate size it would only take you about seven minutes to do it but we're looking at 20 minutes plus tool change time all right the only thing left to do now is to save the tool paths you will want to save these individually so that you can change the tool and you want to use one of the gerbil post processors we're going to be using gerbil millimeters all right the only thing left to do now is to cut it and see how it turns out